now we are discussing a lesson called mechanical properties of solids we know that solids are strong materials as well as rigid materials we know that solids are rigid and strong in nature in this lesson we are discussing if a mechanical force is applied on the solid materials how the solid materials will behave the general behavior when we see the application of the applied force on solids is deformation that means take an object of finite size a mechanical force is applied on the object on any side or any face of the body you can apply diagonally also here my intention is not to apply the force on all corners any one corner or any face of the body if you choose it a small amount of mechanical force or a big load is applied on the body there may be a change in the shape of the body the change may occur in length the change may occur in area the change may occur in volume of the body and permanently sometimes there is a permanent deformation in the object in some solids the deformation is permanent in some solid materials the deformation is temporary means is a time dependent so this is called deformation that means if a mechanical force is applied on a rigid body or a strong body see, concludingly we can say it as a solid body there is a change in the length of the body maybe in the area of the body or maybe in the volume of the body in a single word we can say it is a deformation this deformation may be permanent or temporary so this is called one of the results of the applied force on the solid materials if suppose some objects the deformation is temporary that means if you take a sponge type material apply the force from one end or one face it will compress the dotted lines indicates the size reduction after the force applied then what we can understand is suppose if you remove the force the very next moment the body again regains its original state this ability to regain its original state in the removal of the external force is called elasticity the main reason to exhibit the elastic behavior of the solid is restoring force that means restoring force always opposes the applied force in opposite direction but in same magnitude in case of springs the restoring force f is equal to minus kx such like that we can understand the restoring force in different elastic materials the next concept we will see is elastic behavior of solids some solids exhibits the elastic behavior and some solids doesn't so there are two types of behaviors that are possible for a solid material first one is elasticity suppose if a body was applied by an external force if you remove the external force then the body is able to regain its original state then the behavior of the body is called elasticity those bodies which exhibits this property is called elastic bodies or elastic materials so the ability 
to regain the original state of a body in the absence of external force is called elasticity the materials which exhibits this property is called elastic bodies or materials examples for the elastic bodies best example is spring suppose if you take the spring like this which is an which was in a uniform shape initially if you apply the force from any one end automatically it will compress suppose if the force applied in the forward direction it expands force applied in the backward direction from the back end it will compress after the removal of the external force automatically the spring can regain its original state means it comes to the original length original area and original volume so the spring is one of the example for the elastic body second one sponge we can see this sponge was a natural example in our daily life so if you applied the force on one end if you remove the force very next moment sponge can regain its original state means it comes to the original length as before original volume as before original area as before so like this we can define the elasticity and the bodies which exhibit the same property the next behavior of the solids is plasticity this plasticity is also called inelasticity the title itself states that plasticity is exactly opposite to the elasticity so what is the meaning of plasticity suppose take one object which is highly strong and highly rigid once a force is applied on any face of the body after the removal of the force some objects they won't regain its original state means they won't come to their original length as before they won't come to the original area as before they won't come to the original volume as before so once the deformation takes place means change in length change in area change in volume takes place it will be permanently stored in the body it is very difficult to regain its original state of course if you if we applied any amount of force in a greater magnitude there is no possibility to regain the original state of the body this behavior of the solids is called plasticity that means if a body is unable to regain the original state in the absence of external force the behavior is called as plasticity the materials or the objects which exhibits this plasticity is called plastic materials or inelastic bodies plastic materials or bodies the name itself says that one of the examples we can take in the behavior of plasticity is all plastic bodies if you apply a force on any plastic body 
there may be a cause for the deformation once the removal of the force happened there is no possibility to regain its original state these are the two major behaviors of the solids under the action of force so what is the differences between this elasticity and plasticity in elasticity deformation is temporary deformation means change in the magnitude of a body but in plastic bodies deformation is permanent it may be a small amount of force is applied the deformation will be in permanent so we can say that plasticity the same deformation is permanent the bodies which regains their original state in the absence of external force mostly we can say that those bodies are strong materials highly strong which has a long life and high many uses so mostly elastic bodies sometimes strong bodies except sponge type materials but in case of plasticity the materials are not that much strong very thin and delicate and that are useful for a short interval of time the strong body's lifetime is more a long lifetime this delicate bodies has short lifetime these are the main differences between the elastic bodies and plastic bodies next we will see some of the physical quantities which explains the elastic behavior of the solids the first physical quantity in that is stress this stress was classified into many types first we will see the general definition of the stress and their units then we will go to the classification so what is a stress stress is almost similar to pressure the general definition of the pressure is force acting or force applied on unit surface area of the body but in case of stress the definition may change like this in case of solids just now we have discussed a force called restoring force which is able to regain the original state to the body which is able to give the original state nothing but the restoring force is the reason behind the elastic behavior of the solids that means the same definition which was applied to the pressure is applied in a different way with different terminologies what are those here the force applied on unit surface area of the body and in the case of stress we can say that the restoring force that is developed per unit surface area of the cross section of the body is called stress the restoring force developed per unit area of cross section is called stress so it is a restoring force or force so the stress is equal to restoring force per unit area so it is equal to f by a so the restoring force is 
equal to the force of deformation but in opposite direction so the same statement can be written as force of deformation per unit area here also it is f by a so we can write this one as f r by a it is f d by a. so what is the units and the dimensions of the stress So, stress is equal to force by area. If you go to the SI unit, the SI unit of force is Newton and SI unit of area is meter square. We know that 1 Newton per 1 meter square is equal to 1 Pascal. For CGS unit, the CGS unit of force is dyne, the CGS unit of area is centimeter square and we know that the ratio between the Newtons and dynes also. If you want to see the dimensions or the dimensional formula of the stress, is equal to the dimensional formula for force is m l t power minus 2 whole divided by area is l square so m l by l square is 1 by l we can write l power minus 1 t power minus 2 this is the dimensional formula of stress and in similar words we can write for pressure also it is equal to if you keep any physical quantity in square brackets there is nothing but the dimensional formula of that physical quantity so the stress or pressure has one dimension in mass minus one dimensions in length and minus two dimensions in time this stress is a tensor physical quantity What is the meaning of tensor? Initially we have discussed about the vectors and scalars but this is a third type of physical quantity that is called tensor. So what is the meaning of tensor? There are some physical quantities which are not completely described or which are not completely explained by direction, unit and magnitude. So by concluding or by calculating the unit, direction and magnitude still there is no possibility to completely explain that physical quantity. Those physical quantities are called tensors. Example is stress is one of the example. Moment of inertia is another example. So the physical quantities that are not completely defined defined by direction and magnitude and units. Those physical quantities are called tensor physical quantities. Example, stress is one example second one is moment of inertia
there are many other examples as we proceed to the next lessons we will find out what are the quantities that are present in the tensor physical nature now we are discussing a problem which is related to the stress applied on the body a steel wire of 2 mm diameter is stretched by applying a force of 72 newtons find the stress in the wire so the diameter of the wire d is equal to 2 millimeters is nothing but 2 into 10 to the power of minus 3 meters the force applied on the body is 72 newtons we should find the stress in the wire therefore stress is equal to force by area steel wire any metallic wire has circular cross section so therefore we can write this one as f by pi r square because area of a circle is pi r square so force is 72 pi is 3.14 what is r r is nothing but d by 2 so we can write d by 2 whole square so therefore stress is equal to 72 by 3.14 into d is 2 into 10 to the power of minus 3 whole square by 2 square 2 square is 4 this 4 will go up so it is 288 by 3.14 into 4 into 10 to the power of minus 6 288 into 10 to the power of 6 by 3.14 into 4 if you do the calculation this 4 into 288 72 times 72 into 10 to the power of 6 by 3.14 concludingly we will get the answer 2.292 into 10 to the power of 7 newton per meter square this much stress is applied on the body with the help of this force next we will discuss the different types of stress Based on the direction of applied force and the result of the applied force, the stress has classified into different ways. The main important one is, the first one is longitudinal stress. What is the longitudinal stress? Suppose if a stress is applied, if there is a change in the length of the body, that stress is called longitudinal stress means if a stress is able to change the length of the body or wire then the stress is longitudinal so this longitudinal stress which gives the change or deformation in the length of the body this is the first type best example take a body which is fixed at one end and second end if you apply the force to expand it or if a metal wire which is freely hanged on the second end if you apply the load continuously like this if you are keeping the weights on adding there may be a possibility in the expansion of the wire so the expansion will take place means only length of the body is changing so that's why 
this is called longitudinal stress the second stress is normal stress so what is the meaning of normal stress if a stress is applied on the body in normal direction means exactly tangent that is called normal stress if a stress is applied in a normal direction or a direction of normal is called normal stress if you want to see, visualize the concept of the normal stress let us take a cube type material this is a cube type material and on this cube if you apply the force perpendicularly on any face like this or like this or like this or like this not four at or at a time any one corner any one face this type of stress the body experience and the application of force is called normal stress the third type of stress is tensile stress Yeah, the meaning of the tensile means almost like a tension so what is the meaning of tensional force to equal amount of forces which are moved to opposite direction that will create a tensional force in the body that means if a stress applied on the body creates a tensional force in it that stress is called tensile stress if you want to visualize the concept you can visualize like this this is a body of uniform shape and finite dimensions this is one force this is another force means if your body if you want to try to expand a body in opposite directions in the middle of the body it creates a tension or you can fix one end you can apply the force in the another end that is also creates the tension so fixing at one end applying the force at another end this is the fixed so what we can understand if a stress creates the tensile force in a body that stress is called tensile stress the examples for the tensile stress is a body which is fixed at one end and force applied on another end or if a body was applied in between the two opposite and equal forces those are the examples for the tensile stress the fourth one which is exactly opposite to the tensile stress is compressive stress tensile strength can be created in the expansion of the body compressive stress can be created to compress the body from other ends that means if this is the body force is applied on face to face like this therefore you can say the compression of the body will take place that means like this this compression may take place that means if a stress creates the compression in a body that stress is called compressive stress this compressive stress is exactly opposite in direction of the tensile stress the next type of stress is volume stress or bulk stress
this is the fifth category so what is volume stress or bulk stress suppose if a normal force applied on the body or normal stress applied on the body if it can change the volume of the body that stress is called volume stress if a normal force or normal stress can change the volume of the body the stress is called volume stress last one in the different types of stress is shearing stress or tangential stress so what is shearing stress let us take a cube type of body in this type of body two parallel forces are applied on opposite faces which are in opposite direction that means one force is applied like this one force is applied like this or one force is applied like this one force is applied like this try to assume a sponge in between these two hands suppose if i want to simply make a diagonal of that i will apply one force in one direction this will be in another direction that means if this is the original state of the body this body will change like this like this so the faces simply changes some angular displacement this type of stress is called shearing stress or tangential stress that means if a force applied or st stress applied tangentially on opposite faces with two parallel forces is called shearing stress the force or parallel forces applied on opposite faces of a body is called shearing stress or tangential stress so there are six types of stress and these six types of stress are able to are useful to possibly find out the elastic moduli in different cases the next concept is strain so what is the meaning of the strain take an object of finite length which is fixed at one end suppose if a force is applied on its area automatically there is a change in its length we have seen in the example of the longitudinal stress also how the way to apply the force is to just adding the weights if you add the weights in a pan which is connected to the lengthy wire it is nothing but the force applied on it in a uniform way so automatically length changes maybe expands maybe compresses also so if the direction of the applied force is downward that's why the body is expanding body expanding means there is a change in length originally it has some length 
such like that there will be change in area and there will be change in volume suppose it is a 3d spherical body if you apply the force on one end the compression takes place here automatically the volume of the body will change so all may be like this so if you applied force can create the stress in the body as well as strain in the body also that means there are naturally changes occurred in the dimensions of the body change in length change in area change in volume the ratio between the change in the dimensions of the body by the application of the forces to its original dimensions is called strain the ratio between the change in dimensions due to the applied force to the original dimensions is called strain this strain is three different types longitudinal strain volumetric strain and shearing strain the first different type of strain is longitudinal strain that's why we are discussing the example of the strain we have seen one example that uh, there is a body of unit length weights are added on that then it will expand the expansion will takes like this from here to here the expansion takes place so the change in length by original length is called longitudinal strain longitudinal strain is equal to the change in length by original length the general definition of the strain is the change in dimensions by original dimensions so the change in length we can say it as delta l original length we can say it as l so longitudinal strain is equal to delta l by l if the strain takes place because of the tensile force that is said to be tensile strain if the strain occurred due to the compressive force that is said to be compressive strain The next strain is volume strain. So what is volume strain? The change in volume by original volume. That means the strain because of the applied force or because of the applied stress there is a change in volume. And the change in volume by the original volume of the body gives the volume strain. Therefore the change in volume by original volume the change in volume is represented as delta v original volume is represented as v 
so this delta v by v will give the volume strain next one is shearing strain To understand the concept, let us take a cube type body. A force is applied which are parallel or which are anti parallel to each other like this. Therefore, the displacement of this one will take like this. Let us take the length of the body is or length of the any side of the body is capital L. So from here this point is shifted to some small l displacement. So here it is making an angle theta also. So what is tan theta opposite by adjacent? Opposite side by adjacent side. This is the length of the body of one side capital L. This small l is the displacement of this side with angular displacement because of the two um, anti parallel forces applied on it. So therefore theta is equal to L by L is called shearing strain. For small angular displacement tan theta will become theta. So what is the definition of this? This is the definition, this definition we can say like this. The small displacement due to the applied forces by the original length of the side. The small displacement due to force by original length of the side. This is called shearing strain. I mean, shearing means there is a change in any one point. If you see the strain, whether it is longitudinal strain or volume strain or shearing strain, the formula is change in dimensions by by original dimensions. means it is a ratio in this ratio if you want to find out the units we can say that strain is a dimensionless and unitless quantity it is unitless and dimensionless physical quantity We should not say that it is a constant for a body like a refractive index in a light for a denser medium. It's not like that. It depends upon the load applied also. So it is a unitless and dimensionless physical quantity. Why it is unitless or dimensionless? See change in length by original length. Length will be in meters, original length will be in meters. The units also get cancelled. So delta L by L, units cancel. Change in area by original area, meter square by meter square, cancel, delta A by A. Change in volume by original volume, meter cube by meter cube. So anyway, what we are understanding is we are getting the only integers in a form of answers, not with the units. That's why strain we can say it as unitless and dimensionless physical quantity. Next one is elastic limit.
so what is elastic limit if you are up, keep on applying the force on unit surface area of the body there is a force by a ratio is nothing but the stress there should be or there is a particular value of stress nothing but the maximum stress so the maximum stress within which the body can regain its original state in the absence of deforming force is called elastic limit the maximum stress within which a body can regain its original state in the absence of deforming force is called elastic limit means if you keep on applying the force continuously there is a possibility for the complete deformation for the elastic objects also means once the limit crosses the maximum value the bodies may not be possible to regain its original state they will be in the deformed state continuously that means the body's elastic limit was crossed over so within the elastic limit the applied stress is directly proportional to the strain within the elastic limit the applied stress is directly proportional to strain so we can write stress is proportional to strain this is called hooke's law of elasticity so for this one elastic limit is very very important so if stress is proportional to strain within the elastic limits according to the hooke's law statement then we can say that stress divided by strain is equal to constant this constant we can call as modulus of elasticity modulus of elasticity is the ratio of stress to strain on the body as we know that strain is unitless but stress has the units of pressure that means uh, modulus of elasticity has the units of pressure nothing but newton per meter square or pascal so it has the units and dimensions of stress or pressure where strain is a unitless quantity unitless physical quantity so what we can understand so what is the dimensions of the modulus of elasticity m l power minus 1 t power minus 2 units is newton per meter square 
are Pascals. Like this, we can understand the modulus of elasticity. Their modulus of elasticity, it has three to four different types. We will discuss those different types one by one. The next concept is moduli of elasticity. There are three different modulus of elasticity. In plural sense, we can say it as moduli. The first one is Young's modulus or Young's modulus of elasticity. It is fully based on longitudinal stress and strain. So what is the way to define this Young's modulus? The symbol of the Young's modulus of elasticity is Y. The definition says that within the elastic limit, the ratio of longitudinal stress to longitudinal strain is called Young's modulus of elasticity. Within the elastic limit, the ratio of longitudinal stress to longitudinal strain is called Young's modulus of elasticity. So we can write Young's modulus y is equal to longitudinal stress by longitudinal strain. Now we will see the expansion form of the Young's modulus in case of a any metal wire. 